Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Healing Art After Hours. I'm Shauna Robeson with Creating Space Coastal, and in this video, we are going to be exploring eyes. Eyes are a great way that we can express ourselves, and we can express ourselves through color, and eyes are one of the most colorful parts of, of, of the human animal compared to other animals. But in this video, we are going to just be playing around with different expressions that you can make with eyes using either graphite pencil or color pencil. Uh, you can use whatever you want to color, but uh, if you're interested in learning how, let's get started. All right, so I just wanted to show you because even for, um, even with each individual, there are many different eye shapes and even face shapes and lip shapes and everything. So there's a lot of variables with faces. And even within one face, there are a variety of expressions that we make and we can look at the shape of our eyes on in various shapes. Like here, you can kind of see maybe the top of my, um, the sclera of the white part of the eye over, you know, you can see the pupil and then a little bit of the white above. Again, here too, because I'm opening my eyes really wide, but normally you wouldn't see that. So these are the little details that we want to pay attention to when we're trying to create an eye, because if you make, if you make the eye like that, you're going to make an, a surprised look or like a kind of a wild look, and maybe that's not the look you're going for. So you're, so you're wanting to think about the expression. Here's kind of like the sexy eye where the top is cut off. It's maybe half of the pupil is showing here. And that gives kind of a, maybe it could be a sexy eye or a squinty eye, like a, you know, side eye, like maybe they're, um, depending on, you know, other features of their face. So this is a, I'm really smiling. So this, my, my eyes squint up a lot more. You don't see the top or the bottom of my pupil here. And even at my rela most relaxed state, for my, for me, maybe because I have, you know, small eyes, you don't see the top or bottom of the, you don't see the sclera above or below. You, you, it's cut off. So uh, when we create the eyes, we want to just be thinking about you know, what is the expression that we're trying to make? And we're going to play around with that a little bit. So that's part of what we're going to be exploring. And one way to, to do that for you guys uh, when you have time is take some fun or look through your own photos, but take some pictures of yourself and see, you know, what, what is the shape of your eye? What are the different expressions of your eye? Where, you know, where is your pupil? You want to think about where you're looking and that sort of thing. Um, here's an example. Let me share this screen of some various eye shapes. The different anatomies of the, the eyes, there's different shapes. Some are closer together. Now, typically, the eyes, there's typically about an eye width space between the two eyes. And I actually have a handout that I'm going to be posting this week that has a like a little guide for the face and, and um, whatnot. So, uh, but typically there's about an eye width here between and about an eye width to the side as well, to the side of the head. Um, now that's a general guide and everybody's different. Here it's um, the wide set eyes. Now again, she has wider eyes. So the set between them is a little bit wider too. Um, hooded eyes, this means that you can't see like normally you can see a little bit of this, this top lid, but if it, they're hooded, you see, you don't see any of that because the lid is drooping down and meeting the, basically the top part of your lashes. Uh, here again, you don't really see that, that um, unique lid on top of it. It's more, um, it's, it's more flat above. You're not seeing it go, you know, go back real far. Um, deep set eyes, again, you don't see a lot of that, that lid. So sometimes they are upturned, they're angled. So from this point to this point is angled up a little bit. Sometimes they're down. Um, from this point to this point, they might, they might angle a little bit down. The almond shape. So you can see there are a variety of different shapes of eyes. So explore that when we do our practices. Explore shapes, explore different lids, and then we can play around with, um, with makeup too. Now we're not going to have time to do all of that, but 
Um, so this is my little guide and I'm not going to go through the whole face because I'll do that next time. But, um, but the anatomy of the eye, I did want to just mention. And uh, so obviously, you know, we know many of the parts, but if we have a name to them, I think it's just easier to remember, okay, that's something that we got to add. It just, you know, gives us a little bit something to work with. If we have a name to it, we can say, okay, the iris is a little bit um, showing at the bottom, or I mean, the, the sclera is showing this part here is the, the, did I even get the sclera on there? No, see, I need to add the sclera. So this white part is the sclera, um, but there's there's this crease here. Now this person has pretty pretty uh, deep set crease here and pretty round round eye, um, and then hers angles up. This one, if you look from here to here, it's pretty straight across. So it can vary, like I said. Um, there's the medial canthus and then the lateral canthus. That's just a little fleshy area in here. And then the lower lid shelf, it's always good to include that because there's always a, maybe a little reflection of light there that you might get. And then we also wanna keep in mind the reflection of light on the eye because the eye is a very, you know, it's a, it's a wet, glossy, basically part of us. So there's usually some kind of light reflection that you can play around with. And that's good to think about early on. Um, the iris is the, the, the colored part, and that's fun to play with because there's a lot of texture in there. And then the pupil, which is the black part, but again, if you have a reflection, it might not be all black. So um, just observing whenever I start a subject, I always like to just do a study about that subject and really understand it. Now, we're, we don't have to make it, you know, you don't have to make a realistic eye. Maybe you want it to be more a cartoon eye or something, but you know, we use this as a guide and then you take it your direction that you want to take it. All right, so this is what I'm using. The paper is just this mixed media. I've been trying to use this for all of the, all of the classes. So I'm just using that, that paper, but paper does change how pencil works, how colored pencil works. It can affect how how it uh, blends, and if you're using a water medium, it can how it absorbs, how it moves. So just be aware, use the appropriate paper for what medium you're using. Now for the first one, I'm going to be just using, this is probably a number two pencil because it's just like a, a basic leaded uh, mechanical pencil. And then I have a 4B, which is a little bit darker um, in the darkness scale, 4B and then an 8B, and this is good for shading. Uh, this is the one I use for doing a lot of my a lot of my deeper shading if I want to. So I have those, and then I have a blending stump, but if you don't have a blending stump or a tortillon, which is just a rolled paper blending, blender, you can also use a Q-tip, so that'll, that'll work. And I might just show, demonstrate that. So I'm not going to do a face, all I'm gonna do is eyes. That's all we're going to do is just play around with some different shaped eyes. So the first thing I would suggest doing is putting down the, you can actually put a, put a sphere down and think of it as a, because the whole eyeball is, closer, the whole eyeball is a sphere. So if you want to give yourself a guide for the whole eyeball, this is not the pupil, this is the whole eyeball. And then you can kind of, you can make the, the pupil, I mean the iris in the middle of that, however big you want your eye to be. But I like to start with with the iris and then I put my lid on based on the expression that I want. So I have to think, okay, do I want it to be angled? Do I want to go straight across? I'm just going to do simple. So I'm going to do make a point here and a point here straight across. And then I'm just going to slowly bring this up and I'm going to, I'm going to not let my whole pupil or my whole iris show because my eye, my eye doesn't show. And then I'm going to come down here and then on the inside inner aspect of the eye, it kind of has this little jog down. And then it comes back out from there. 
Now, I don't actually want it to be, hold on, I'm gonna, that's why it's in pencil. <laughs> I don't want it to be, well, you know, I could have my eye looking up, but I don't think I want that to be, I think I just want this to come down here. So it's gonna be fairly small, but I do want to make this, little jog here and then bring that around. So if I have my eraser handy too, not sure where that went, but I have an eraser handy. Okay. And then I want to think about how big is my crease above the eye. It can be really high or it can be just a little bit. Mine's just a little crease and I'm just going to make a crease and then on the bottom there's usually a little something there's a little something too because you know you're like i said your 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 eyeball is actually a sphere so you usually get a little bit of a crease up there and a crease there and then up, up here i can kind of just pencil in from the from the inner aspect of this i can just kind of put an eyebrow and the eyebrow has different shapes too, and that can help you with expression. I'm just roughly putting some, some ideas in there. To help me know where everything is. Now I'm going to erase my this guideline. I don't need I don't need that globe anymore. I just kind of wanted to know where the globe of my eye is. Now typically the space of the sclera, the white part, is about, um, if you cut this up into four sections, the iris is about half of the space. And then the sclera is about a quarter and a quarter, or depending on the, where the eye is. So my iris is pretty small given that. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because I can, because it's pencil. There, that looks a little bit better. That was a pretty small, pretty small um, eye. I'm getting rid of some guidelines. And then in the center of this, of course, is the pupil. But before I put the pupil in, I'm going to go ahead and just mark in my light reflection. So I'm just gonna make a simple one is just put a circle um, wherever you want it to be. And then if the if the pupil hits the that, you just leave that white. Just you're just marking it in so you make sure that you keep it white. So I'm putting in my pupil and I'm just making sure that I'm not going to take up that white space. Let me bring this in a little bit closer. Okay. And then what I like to do is because a lot of times if you look close to an eye, there are a lot of little lines that kind of come in from the outer part of the eye. So I like to draw in A little bit from the outside and then also from the center out first. Just randomly, not uniform, different lengths, just to give it a little bit of some texture. And now I'm going to use my softer my softer 4B pencil, and I'm just gonna lightly put in some, lay down a little bit of lead, some, um, just lightly. Now this side is the dark side of the eye, so it's gonna be a little bit darker over here. And then this side's gonna be lighter. So I'm not gonna put anything over there because I'm gonna be blending and, and there's already a little bit of lead down there, so it's going to, pick up that and, and blend it in. So now I'm gonna take my, my blending stick 
and I'm going to again I'm going to be moving with the lines kind of blending that out a little bit. I want to be careful not to blend inside that white circle because that's my that's where I want to keep it the whitest. Now over here, I didn't add any pencil because it's already got a little bit of pigment there that I can work with for my blending. Now I'm gonna just blend these lines that I put there and that'll soften them up. And the pigment, the um, graphite that was laid down will just blend up and soften and also add a little bit of shading. Now on the top, this is overhanging the eyeball. So there's a little bit of shadow along that whole top edge. So I wanna bring a little bit of that down, a little bit of that graphite down. And where the crease is, of course, it's gonna be darker. So I'm just smoothing that a little bit. Now I could make that darker still. I'm just moving that graphite around. Now the bottom where the lashes are gonna go comes down a little bit where that lower lid plate is. And put that in. And then there's an even smaller variation of that on the top. Once I put the lids, the lashes in, you're not going to see the top one as much, but the bottom ones usually you can see. Now, up here, I want a little bit of some shading. I'm going to put the eyebrow in, maybe draw a few little hair. You don't have to draw every single hair. You can just, you just want to give it an idea. But if you're going to do some blending, then some of those hairs will kind of settle down. Here, let me use the... Uh, Q-tip to show you how that works. See, that works pretty good to blend. And then I also want a little bit of some shadow um, I want to keep this part right here the lightest because that's where that's where the the eyelid is going to protrude the most. So I want to put a little bit of shadow above and below that just so that that highlight or that yeah that the highlight is just more noticeable. So I'm just moving a little bit of the pigment down from the top and then up from the bottom to create that dimension. And see how it just starts to make that look like it's folded coming out towards you that the light is reflecting there. I usually don't want to have the sclera, even though it's white, it's still not like white, white. So it's always good to maybe just add a little bit of some shading in there. It's the lightest that you have, but it's still going to be lighter. Or, um, still not going to be bright, bright white, typically. Okay, now lashes, which can be some of the most challenging parts of this. They typically, and of course, if you have false lashes, you know, you have the longer lashes here. Um, but just think about it. When you're looking straight onto the eye, um, the lashes that are to the left here are going to 
be um, curved a little bit going this way. The ones in the middle are going to look like they're straight, and then the ones to the right are going to be curved this way. So, and these ones are going to be short towards the center. This is the center. Uh, so, and just start slow and then build. Don't put them all, don't try to put every single hair. Just start with like bigger ones and then add some, fill it in a little bit. And, and you don't want them to be like all uniform. And then these ones are usually a little shorter from the bottom. And they, they come out of the front part of the shelf, not the back part. So this line that we added, that's where they're gonna be coming out of. Same thing, they kind of look straight from the middle, but they're a lot shorter. They don't go necessarily go all the way to the end. These ones are a lot, lot more subtle. Yeah. And then the crease here, this is where the nose is. I put in the number two, which isn't as soft, but so this area is where the side of the nose is, so it's a little bit darker right there. And there's an eye. Okay, so try a few different shapes of the eye. I wanna do, I'm gonna do a colored eye now, and then, um, and then I'll play around with just different shapes of eye, but I wanna make sure that we have enough time. Now, the colors that I have, I have a lot more than what you think, but I'm going to go through what I'm using. You can do simple. I mean, you don't have to have the range that I'm using, but the more depth you want, the more layers you might want to use. Okay, so the lightest is white. And then I'm going to use, actually, the first one I'm going to use is, I'm just going to use a really light, um, this is kind of a, this is a warm, warmish gray. I'm going to use this just to do my lines because I want them to be really subtle. And then for flesh tones, again, you could use, you could use three colors or five colors or one color if you want, but I'm using a really light peach. I have um, a, a pink. And then I just have a darker color. So this one is, if you're using prism colors, this is pink rose. This one is, I think it's just peach, oh, no, light peach. And then I have magenta, which is a darker of the, the pink. And then I have this Tuscan red, which is, and actually, let me just draw these on here so you can see these colors see what they look like. It's nice just to have a lot of choices and to, you know, that you can work with. So these two kind of work together as a light and dark. And then this one is the Tuscan red and that's like a darker a version of the peach because it's kind of a warm um, sort of brick red. And then I have some brown tones to to really do like the darker stuff. So I have this one and maybe the brows, but this is a burnt ochre. This one is a dark brown. So you just wanna have a variety of tones in whatever colors you want. Depending on the skin tone you're working with, you may not want these. Now I'm gonna make a blue eye. So I have a light and dark shade of the blue. I have an indigo blue and a blue slate. So whatever you're using, have a light and dark. And then I also should have in here a black. So that's for my darkest is black. So 
that's what I am going to be using for this eye. Now the gray also works well for that, like it's told you that the sclera part isn't white white, you want to have a little bit of shading here and there, that's what I'm going to use that for. Okay, so I do going to do the same thing that I do to get the shape of this, I'm just going and I'm going to start with my, I'm going to make it bigger this time. And if you want, you can use a stencil or you can use a, a coin, depending on how big you want to do it. Erasing the part of the iris that I don't need. And then I'm going to go ahead and start with coloring the iris. I'm going to go ahead and put a just a okay, I'll use the black. Put in my reflection, my light. Right there. And then for the people, I'm going to make that center. And then I'm going to put a layer of the lightest shade that I'm going to be using for my eye. And then I'm going to just uh, create, because usually or sometimes the eye has a, like a darker frame around it. And then I'm going to draw in those lines I was telling you about before, like coming out from the center, just randomly. And then out from this outer part. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to my lighter pencil, and now I'm going to use my lighter pencil as kind of a blender. This side, this is the side that doesn't have the light, so I'm going to use a little bit more of the darker blue on this side. I'm using the indigo, I'm going to mix the indigo with the black for the pupil just because I like it to be kind of a cool. Black, so I'm just putting a little bit of indigo, then a little bit of black. All right, I'm going to use the peach to lay in some of the the shapes around the eye. This is my lightest flesh tone, because I can always make it darker, but it's harder to go lighter, so I'm just going to start with that just to put in my crease. I'm going to make it bigger. Bigger lid. Use this time. I'm just going over the gray with that peach to soften that line. Now this time, I can actually, because I have a lot of space down here, I can actually create my lid ledge line inside the space. Normally I would do it after, but in this case I can create my ledge.
in the crease, I want it to be the darkest in the crease line and then move lighter as it goes to this area. The center part is light and then the center part is light. So I'm gonna just lay down this dark brown because that's gonna be kind of my deepest shadow. And then as I move away from it, I'm just gonna put a little bit of lighter tones and I'm just I'm just laying down a little bit of pigment. I'm not, um, because I'm gonna be blending. So I just wanna put some pigment down. This is my, and I don't want too much because I wanna kinda, of I also wanna do sort of a makeup eye. So I don't wanna to put too much of the flesh tones down. I wanna combine it with my, my uh, makeup color. This is the lightest uh, pinky color. Just gonna lay down a little bit of that in there. And my peach color. I love the ochre to create a little darkness, darkness right near the lid. And then down below the eye too. And I'm careful not to put the lashes in quite yet because I don't want to do blending before I add the lashes because then when I start to blend with the lashes, I'm going to be mixing those in with the color. So I like to put the lashes on closer to the end. If, especially if I'm working with. And then what I want to do is, and then I think about, okay, how would I do my makeup? I would do the darkest color in this area. Brightest, I can use my white as a blender. So here where I want it the lightest, I'm going to blend into the color from the white color. That'll make sure it stays bright. And you can put a little bit more, like if you need more highlight in some areas, you can you know, use the light, the white to do that. Like I want a little bit of highlight on this part of the lid so I can use the white part. And the crease part. I want to be a little bit more. In there. Soften that line. So I'm kind of rotating a little to try to just, I don't want it to look like a line. I want it to be a little softer. So I'm rotating my blender, trying to soften the shape a little bit. Now you definitely want a sharp pencil. See how 
like with the bright white, it's just so stark. So if you just add a little bit of gray, especially here, there's a little bit of a shadow from the top, but just even adding just a little bit of, you know, gray in there and then just blend it in. You don't have to put too much. Just to tone down the white a little bit so it doesn't look so unnatural. One of the challenges with lashes is, you know, once you've done some of the blending and it's waxy, it's harder to lay down more pigments. So, but again, if I were to put the black down and then I tried to blend that out, that would just blend the black in there too. So that's, so it's kind of a catch 22. <laughs> And I'm going to bring the black in just to make some low lights within the lashes there. A little bit, not too much. You see me, um, I, I will just clean off my blender over here. So if you want to see me hear that off the side, that's what I'm doing just to clean off any pigment. If I'm going to a new color that I don't want to mix. Now, I can see the hairs and I want to see them somewhat, but I don't want them too prominent. So I'm just trying to tone it down by just adding a little bit darker. Just filling it in a little bit, like I would with a, with a brow pencil. I want a hint of the hairs, but I don't want it to be. And then um, you can just look at your highlights and lowlights. That's the last thing I do is just, is there are some areas I can maybe darken? There's some areas I can lighten a little bit. Um, and then I just go in and um, fill in any of those high contrast things. I think I'm gonna say that's done. So I have some time to play around with other eyes. Um, so now I'm just going to just play around with shapes of eyes with pencil. Just, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna do just simple, some simple shading and simple eye shapes just to try out different expressions. And then I can color those later, but, um, but at least we'll be able to play around with those a little bit because I don't think I'm going to have time since I've got about 20, 20 more minutes. Wow, time goes by so quickly. Here's an example of some of um, some of the my practice pages if you want to <laughs> just uh, practicing face, you know, eyes and facial features. But this is the kind of thing you want to do, like just try different shapes of eyes, different colors, play around with them and See what you think. See, notice. Oh, does that eye look kind of weird? With you know, if the if the lid's covering the top, or does it look weird if it's touching the bottom, or does it, you know, touching both? What kind of expression do you imagine? You know, that that person has, and see if you can just come up with some new expressive expressive eyes. All right. As always, I'm going to just go ahead and start with my my circle of my iris. I always make it a little too small. I'm going to make it bigger. Because then I'll make the eye really small. Just hard for you guys to see. Bigger. All right, maybe I want to.
I want to try it where actually I want to do a surprised eye. <laughs> Now I'm going to make my light shape a little bit weird now, not, not round, it doesn't have to be round, I just, that's just for simple because maybe you're looking at something so I'm going to make it a little bit weird shaped this time just to mix it up. laid down some of that 8B, which is a really soft lead, so I didn't have to put very much on and it, and it lays down, you know, quite a bit of so. Now this is when it's handy to have one of these electric erasers if you want to do detail erasing. I just have a little bit of guidelines that are a little further than I want them to be. So I, I can sharpen the tip by using some sandpaper and then just laying this on there and pressing the button and it just rotates. Oh, when it has battery, <laughs> I guess the battery is dead. That's funny. Okay, well, this rotates if it has batteries and it's working, this rotates. It uh, doesn't, apparently the battery has died since the last time I used it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and it's got a tip on it. It's a little bit easier. Because what you could do is you could create your your highlight by just erasing it out, and you can do it with this. It's a little harder to do it with a regular eraser, but unfortunately, I should have checked that. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's not even like it's low. It's like completely done, and I used it not too long ago, so I'm surprised. Because it's not like you can just leave it on. So I don't know why. I don't know why it's dead, but. There you go. Welcome to my world. Welcome to the world of reality where things like that happen. Definitely works a lot better when it's you know, just me. <laughs> So I can still demonstrate. So let's say I just I just over blended and I I really filled in my whole area and I really wanted to bring back some highlights. I could, you know, I could go ahead and erase some highlights back into it. And just remove some of the graphite and then you can blend it out so that it's a little softer edges. So the nice thing about it is with, with pencil, you can always fix it. Now there's a little bit of graphite just already on the blender. So I'm not really touching anything that's that pigment. I'm just laying down whatever, what was on, already on there, just because I want a little bit of some pigment in my sclera. Be because I want this to be um, just a little bit wider line. I'm just laying down a little bit more of the eight because it's soft and it can move. So I just want to. I want the darkest to be there, but I want it to blend out a little bit more. I want a more of a gradient, so it shows like it's a really deep set.
there's a surprised eye. <laughs> and a crazy eye. And then I want to do a closed eye. Which a closed eye is kind of a little bit of a sort of an S curve. It's already done using the graphite, I should say. I'm moving it around with my, in this case, I'm using the Q-tip. It's not real, um, it's a little harder to control. It's not like a fine tip like my stump, but as you can see, it's definitely doable. Eyebrow shapes. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that works. See what kind of mood my eye is in. play around with um, all sorts of eye shapes and even if you um, do a pencil you could come in with some color let's see I'm just gonna do brown eyes so I'm using my brown tones and my black so let's just make this guy here Starting with my lightest color, I'm just gonna kind of mix it in there. Obviously, it's got a lot of graphite in there, so it's not gonna be as clean as if you just you know did the color. But I still think you can kind of have fun with mixing mixing the two. eyes 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 have it so um, I think 
I'm going to go ahead and pause there and uh, let's do show and tell so we can see what you guys have been working on. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Healing Our After Hours. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find this content helpful. Thank you so much. And as always, happy creating. Bye.